All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jose, and today we're going to be going on a quick tour of my flight simpit. So this is a DIY setup, guys. This costs about 200 bucks. You can do it yourself. By the way, I'm going to have a link below. Uh, it's going to have the PDF and the video. So if you want, sign up on that link, get into the emails, and you will get that for free. I'm not going to charge for that. It's just something that I want to make because I'm sure there's somebody else out there that's curious about this. When I was looking online, I found a couple things but they were a little bit more advanced and then i found nothing so it was either kind of like really advanced or actually i lied there were some really simple things and i kind of didn't like either of them so this is maybe somewhere in the middle and it costs around 200 dollars to do so again that's gonna be available here coming up soon link will be down below but this has made such a big difference in my performance in vr because everything's in a fixed location right the biggest thing in vr have your headset on you can't see your joystick you can't see your throttle but you need to control it right so having everything exactly where you want it built to your specs allows you to really just get in there and fly so i want you guys to check out the video let me know by the way i'm not a carpenter so i did keep some of my <laughs> woodwork uh shop skills here very simple i didn't go any fancy i didn't put any pocket holes i did sand the unit i did paint it but uh, let's get into it and drop some comments below criticize me let me know what you think let's have some fun here we go guys thanks for watching all right phil pots here's the whole sim rig i painted it i did all this believe it or not all the wood tool screws was 200 dollars, and i'm telling you it's super cool you guys are gonna have all that information below the seat got that actually used for 40 bucks which is awesome the red clamps those are two inline clamps i picked up off amazon and it was a custom solution that helps me prevent from having the seat roll back while i'm using the rudder pedal so it's super awesome uh, if you notice on the side left and right side of the seat with that wiring those are 250 watt or a base shakers connected to a 100 watt sub amp and also a gsx sennheiser amplifier which kind of helps split the audio which is super cool but as you can see guys you sit down on the sim pit you roll forward you lock the seat and here i get to fly a Boeing 737 on the right i got the honeycomb throttle quadrant with the 737 3d printed from etsy uh the handles flight sim radio uh from lot or i'm sorry the logitech flight radio right and the hotas this setup here is from thrustmaster guys super awesome i mean just great quality overall um i actually had to repair my warthog after a few years because it died on me but overall great quality the Cougar Thrustmaster MFDs, those are the multifunction displays for when you're flying the F-16, it's super critical. And the Honeycomb Yoke. I got a super simple Logitech speakers and keyboard over there. This trackball mouse, I'm telling you, you want trackball and you want it double-sided tape or Velcro to your desk. That way it doesn't roll away in BR. Super critical. That's the Sennheiser amp that's connected to the 100 watt sub amp that is connected to my chair, giving you all those bass shaker fears. It's like a butt kicker but it's a DIY setup and it costs about 150 bucks to make. So I kind of did it myself, I connected in series. I have the Logitech 3D Pro pedals and up top we have a 32 inch 4K monitor and a light bar. So again, I love having the light bar, especially if you're deciding to not fly in VR, although I always fly in VR, it's great to have. Up top we have the Kiwi Design uh, VR cable management system, which holds up my trusty reverb g2 cable which we'll see how much longer we get to squeeze out of this because windows is killing it uh and the computer on the back side 12 900k rtx 4090 32 gigs of ram 5200 megahertz it's a little powerhouse and i really love it it's awesome in fact i use it for everything recording videos editing doing all the fun stuff so i do have a couple cameras set up one on the right hand side here and actually i got these before the pandemic because after the pandemic um did I say that word? I don't know. The video's gonna get shadow banned. Those cameras surged in price. I mean, it was ridiculous, but these cameras are super awesome. NADP, it's super clear. And then with all the surrounding light, it actually does really, really well. So that's how I record my video. I use OBS for the software. I will have all of this linked below if you guys are interested. They will be affiliate links. They don't cost you any more, but it does help me if you wanna kind of take a look at that or get some ideas. And again, overall, this whole rig, it's gonna, you know, Consider this, I made this by myself. I'm not a carpenter. I had a lot of fun creating this. It took a lot longer than I wanted to. On the back side, we have a monitor mount, which was my simple design to kind of put any size monitor. I think you could probably throw a 55 inch back here. And the other part of this that I think is kind of critical is the cable management. You're gonna notice a lot of little details that they're set up. There's a lot of cable management, kind of keeps things nice and clean. The lighting, all of this lighting, which by the way has multi-modes, is Govi lighting uh, and actually everything on here. None of this is sponsored. I've, I've bought this all myself. 
that govi lighting is absolutely amazing you control it on the app uh, i'll show you some footage here in just a few moments of how it looks at night and it is such a cool setup i mean i tell you what it adds like 10 horsepower to this whole rig i really feel like i fly even better just because i have all those lights and um yeah it's just that fun factor right you know you want to customize you want to make it your own and have like a little fighter jet cockpit slash like skyhawk or a cessna 310 whatever i'm flying here i think i threw the autopilot to fly in the bahamas for this video but overall if you take a look at this i mean you know you're able to customize it you got plenty of room on the left and the right i left both sides open i didn't close them specifically because it gives me access to it and i want to be able to get under there now notice how my joystick is connected not the best way i'll take some suggestions if you have it but this works out for me two heavy duty zip ties just holding it down and check out this cable management so that cable management as you can see i use a lot of labels i kept it nice and clean in fact some of them are upside down i think but this allows me to kind of get in there troubleshoot connect one thing at a time if i want to figure out what's what now what is challenging and i've had to do this already once or twice is cut zip ties so let's say if one of the mfds i want to replace it or the radio or a controller you have to start cutting zip ties and yes that's a little bit of work but honestly um it takes just a few minutes to clean it back up and then i'm not doing that again for weeks or months or really i'm not spending any time down there messing it up once you kind of get the whole setup configured it is such a breeze and it is just really nice having everything nice and tight as you see all the cables are all snug it's all kind of perfectly trimmed away to have a really good experience this on the right side allows me to have the bravo throttle quadrant to the right if you don't care to have that you can actually have it right next to your yoke but because i have my joystick there i wanted this set up to the right now over here i did pull away the computer i did pull away the whole setup away from the wall so i could have some room and kind of show you guys a whole setup here but typically this is a lot closer it's nice and snug it's very neat and clean and the feel of it is all it feels like a cockpit that's the whole point of it now from the corner those boxes over there that's from next level racing it's a flight simulator pro which i plan to start building here tonight and that's gonna be really cool to compare a full metal rig compared to this but let's show the uh the brake system i want to show that in effect let you guys see how that performs okay so check it out you roll out the chair you jump in and you sit down and now the biggest issue for me was i'd roll in and i'd start using the brakes using the the differential braking the rudder system and it would actually roll me back so this setup allows me to simply with your feet you lock both of them up and it literally holds you in place it, it picks up the front wheels just enough to lean on the back and now i don't rotate back to be fair if you push hard enough you will move but i'm not pushing that hard this isn't a force feedback setup so i mean it's just enough to hold me in place and for the cost it was totally worth it you lock them down and then you just roll out, roll the chair back in, and you're good to go. If you guys found some value in this video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. And don't forget, if you guys want to learn how to build this, I will have a free PDF, a free video tutorial guide on how to do that. It's going to be linked below, so check that out. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. I appreciate you guys. My name's Jose. I'm an air traffic controller here at Tampa. Huge VR flight sim nerd, and I love sharing this stuff with you guys. So talk soon. If you have any questions, comments, or criticism, leave them in the comments below. Take it easy. Peace out.